Good morning to all you wonderful and beautiful people. Mary Ann Finley here. For those who do not know me, I am a tour guide with a special interest in nature and history. In my travels and studies, I often see how scripture fits into so many areas of the work I do. And God also often speaks to me in so many areas of my work too. Thus, I am going to share one such relevant event. On my last trip to the Kruger National Park with my family to celebrate my mom's 70th, the Lord started to speak to me about my photography and how all I had learnt and applied to it is very much like my Christian spiritual walk. When I started guiding and saw so many wonderful things, I knew that I wanted to get a camera with a good lens. I saved up for many years in order to do just that. When I first started using my camera, I used all the automatic settings and relied on the camera's brain for my pictures. God told me that our Christian walk starts out the same way. New believers who are just getting to know who God is, as well as who He designed them to be, are like my camera when it is on automatic. We are not really applying the Word to our lives at this point, and it can get pretty comfortable just knowing Scripture and going through the motions. When taking pictures in the automatic setting, my pictures looked very nice, so why worry? But I knew that there was more to this craft. Very slowly, I started to teach myself about all the different settings on my camera and started to apply them to all my photographic opportunities. Slowly, I worked myself to the place where I am able to take pictures in the manual setting. And as I learned all the different aspects of these different features of my camera and started to apply them, I started to tangibly see how my photography craft, knowledge and outlook started to change and also improve. God told me how this aspect was a reflection of how God and His Word, when applied in my own life, meant that my spiritual growth was merging into my daily life. As I started to trust, believe and apply God's Word in my life, that's when my mind knowledge started to merge and become heart knowledge. I found my relationship with the Lord changing. I was moving from automatic settings to manual settings. God became more intimate with me. He wasn't far away in heaven and me on earth. There wasn't a separation. He became like a friend to me. A friend who would call me out when I needed to be called out. A friend who would challenge me to not stagnate, who would encourage me. A friend who was patient when I needed time to process things before acting. By applying all these different settings, life, just like my pictures, started to get more colorful. It started to gain depth and beauty. I was able to tangibly see how Christ wasn't just in me, but all around me. And I also discovered that God likes to share and drop intimate details, secrets and hugs in my life. And through all of this, my life was starting to be filled with what Christ referred to as the fullness of joy. When I first go on safari, the first thing I do is to look at what the weather looks like. Is it an overcast day? Is it raining? Or will it be a sunny day? Early mornings are still quite dark, so I need to adjust my settings to accommodate that. If I don't, I will end up with either a very dark and grainy picture or even a completely black picture. Therefore, I need to set my aperture to a higher setting. This can be quite confusing to begin with because a high aperture setting is actually a low number. What this does is to open my lens's eye in order to let in more light so that more of my subject will be visible. So too, in my spiritual walk, 
I first need to assess my attitude to my day. I'm pretty sure we have all heard that old adage that says, a bad attitude is like a flat tire. If we don't change it, we will get nowhere. And it is also important to ask the Lord to send Holy Spirit to open not only my physical eyes, but my spiritual eyes as well, and also to prepare my heart. Then I may see more of where he wants to use me for opportunities. By doing this, I may find myself in that place where, like in Matthew 25, 35 to 40, the Lord will one day say, for I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. The next setting I need to consider and adjust is my shutter speed. This is the setting for how fast I want a picture to be taken. I once had a diving photographer on a safari who gave me the following advice. In low light conditions, you never want your shutter speed to exceed your lens's zoom length. For instance, if your zoom length is 100 millimeters, then your shutter speed shouldn't be higher than one hundredth of a second. The consequences of having a higher shutter speed in low light than the length of the zoom of my lens will result in my pictures very likely being dark and grainy. The term that photographers use for grainy is noisy. Today our lifestyles are often so busy and we are inundated with so much information and social obligations from social media that we often forget the Lord. In my life and experience, it resulted in me trying to do things in my own strength. I would get stressed out, become fearful, become inundated with doubts, and the end result was usually a big old mess. Unfortunately, I tend to be one of those people who have to feel the consequences of my decision and actions instead of just being obedient. My parents have often related a story from my toddler days where a stove plate was red hot. Both my parents warned me not to touch it because it would burn me. Needless to say, I went straight ahead and put my hand on the pretty red stove top and got burnt. God, in his infinite and graceful patience, has helped me to stop relying on my own strength and wisdom and to come under his protection of obedience to him. In my quiet time the other day, as I was reading Deuteronomy 5, my commentary pointed out how important a Sabbath day is. This quote from Francis J. Roberts so beautifully explains why we need to be still, rest, and know that He is God. Give me a heart that has learned how to become quiet and rest. Anybody can work. Few people know how to be quiet. You must be able to collect yourself, to take time to absorb the Spirit of God, for to be freshly filled with the Spirit will bring the guidance and direction and wisdom and the will to do His bidding. There is another setting on my camera called the ISO that one can use to intentionally make a picture noisy or clear. Personally, I like to let my camera adjust itself on the setting automatically. The reason being is that I need my camera to be ready for action shots as I never know when or where this will happen. I know that when I have adjusted my aperture and shutter speed accordingly for the lighting that I find myself in, my automatic setting for the ISO will adjust to all these decisions too. Hence, my camera is ready to start shooting straight away. And because I know the capabilities of my camera, I know that it will adjust to any decision I have made with the settings I have chosen for that moment. It is reliable. It's there alongside me in my choice for that decision. A relationship with God isn't just one-sided. Just like I had to learn to trust God and His Word, 
so too I also had to learn to let God trust me and my decisions. This was a hard lesson to learn. After all, I had burnt my hand so many times in my life decisions. I really wanted God to be in control of every choice I made. And of course God didn't. He did not design me to be a computer, robot or automaton. If he had, he would have complete and total control of me and my free will. There wouldn't be that beautiful love and friendship relationship. I would lose my personhood and become an object, a commodity. So God in his great and wonderful wisdom trusts us and our decisions. He will walk with us whatever choice we make. And believe me, I got pretty mad at God for this when I needed to make really big and serious decisions. God told me that that aspect of my settings was just like this two-way trust road of our relationship. The Word of God is like the settings on my camera. God trusted me to apply His Word and to use the knowledge, wisdom and experience I had gained in all my life decisions. Yes, I would make mistakes that would result in not-so-nice consequences, but He would be with me. He will be there to help encourage and grow me through all decisions and its consequences, whether good or bad. He won't drop me or walk away, but He would not make that decision for me. I saw a meme the other day where the cartoon characters featured were Charlie Brown and Lucy. Lucy was telling Charlie Brown that the Pope said that if Charlie Brown did a certain thing, it would be an act of love. Charlie Brown's response was true, but a forced act of love is called rape. God will never force, violate or rape us in order to do his will. It will always be our choice at how deep our relationship will be. We are even free to reject his gift of love and salvation and live eternally separated from him. Getting back to my camera, every camera has what photographers call the sweet spot. On safari, the best light conditions are what photographers call the golden hour. And every wildlife photographer aims to capture pictures during this time. Also, every camera has a certain combination of settings where pictures taken during this golden hour period will result in pictures that pop, sparkle and shine. And every camera is different. Just like each of us has been created and designed by God to be totally unique. For me, my sweet spot moments in my spiritual walk came about when I started to understand who God is, what his design of me is. And when I embraced this combination of truth and it became a deep engraved on my heart, heart knowledge, and I applied and walked in it. This is when the light and life of Christ started to shine through and in me. This was my golden hour, sweet spot moment. Professional photographers also always have two sets of batteries for their cameras. It is not good to charge up a battery if it's still half full. The battery life will deplete faster. And this is why I too also have two batteries for my camera. So when my battery is on about 1%, I will change batteries and recharge the flat battery when there is an opportunity to do so again. God told me that this is very much like the parable of the virgins and their oil lamps from Matthew 25 verses 1 to 13. The wise virgins always carried spare oil. This is the reason they didn't miss the bridegroom's coming. I once had the misfortune to forget my spare battery on a safari. And will you know it? When my battery died, every good photographic opportunity popped out of the woodwork. Not a mistake I intend to make again. Finally, when I get home from a safari, I get to see my pictures on my computer screen that happens to be a lot bigger than my camera screen. 
This makes a big difference because this is the time when I cull and remove every picture that's blurry, over or underexposed, or that can't be fixed. It's not possible to make this determination from a small camera screen, and experience has taught me not to delete any pictures from my camera when I can only observe it from that small screen. There is a big chance that I may delete a winning picture by doing so. Once all the junk pictures have been removed, I can work on those pictures that need to have some cropping done. Some pictures may need a little more light added. I can remove the harsh light and the shadows, and if need be where pictures are noisy, I can clear them up with a little bit of illumination. And God told me that just like Jeremiah describes him as the potter, so too he is the photographer and graphic editor. He longs to remove every blurry, black, over and under exposed picture in our lives. But he will only do this when we come with humble hearts and ask for repentance. And it's when we ask the Lord to lift those sins from our lives and ask that those areas and affected parts of our lives be washed, cleansed, healed and restored with the blood of Christ that we are able to take more and more steps closer to the Father. The sin that separated us has now been removed. It opens our eyes, ears and hearts to receive his editing of our lives. He can crop those parts of our lives that need cropping, add and subtract light, remove shadows and add luminance with his word when we apply it to our lives. And when this happens, our life pictures pop, sparkle and shine because that's when we have Christ living in us and He is our golden hour. Let us pray. Father, as we begin our day, we ask that you will bask every area of our life settings that need adjusting for the day we will face with your light and life-giving light. We ask that you will not only be the only life energy of our current batteries, but that should we need to have our batteries changed today, you will be our spare too. We ask that every life photo that will be taken today will have Christ in us sweet spots, and that every person we encounter today will be reflected in your golden hour light. We ask all of this in the name of our Lord and King Christ. Amen.